So China is winning the solar space race, while the United States should be leading on the energy of the future. But for some reason, it keeps blowing its chances. Every disaster movie starts with the president overlooking a scientist. But humanity's survival isn't a movie. What if any president in the last five decades had had the vision to take space-based solar power technology seriously? The incoming artificial climate disaster could have already been avoided with a clean, constant, and infinite power source that values less than burning fossil fuels, and the United States could be leading the field. Nowadays, China is at the forefront of technology, which is fundamentally solar power as you know it, except on steroids. It can accumulate energy 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. So instead of taking up millions of acres of land on the ground, space solar farms would be found in geosynchronous orbit, about 22,000 miles above sea level. Far above pesky things like clouds, rain, and the cycle of day and night make peak terrestrial solar power intermittent. China plans on establishing a commercial scale solar power station in orbit by 2050. That would be an accomplishment that would give it boasting rights as the first nation to harness the sun's energy in space and transfer power down to Earth. And that's where things start to get sharp. First, China's space program is a crucial part of China's military program, according to some reports from the U.S. Ex-China Economic and Security Review Commission. This signifies that the Army manages China's space activities, with most of China's ostensibility civilian space activities having dual-use applications. Second, China's space ambitions are all about money and an integral part of its national economic rejuvenation and development goals. Now, more countries are enticed into President Xi Jinping's signature foreign policy adventure, the Belt and the Road Initiative. This cheap, emissions-free power would be challenging for many countries to turn down and dramatically deepen China's political leverage. Or maybe even give Beijing de facto control of countries that buy it, advancing China's goal of creating the first global electrical grid in the world. Meanwhile, the United States has been occupying space-based solar power technology since 1968. That's when NASA advisor and Apollo 11 project manager Peter Glazer released his concept of a solar power satellite as a means of providing solar energy for transmission to Earth in the journal Science. To carry that, Isaac Asimov, one of the most celebrated and prolific science fiction writers of all time, had foretold the idea in 1941, writing about a space station transmitting energy collected from the sun to planets occasionally using microwave beams. In 1983, Asimov again mentioned solar power stations, prophesying that they would be up and running by, oops, 2019. It's not like NASA hasn't attempted to get the space-based solar power ball rolling, providing different presidential administrations with development and evaluation reports and utility studies, and even suggesting it as the major power source for a first-generation constantly occupied lunar base. One of the biggest challenges to the implementation of a continuously manned lunar base is power. Using an orbiting space-based solar power station to generate electrical power and beam it to a base sited anywhere on the moon should be considered. The technology to collect sunlight, create more than an estimated 35 kilowatts of the continuous power needed for the lunar base, and beam it to the surface using microwaves is available today. Still, for various reasons, most if not all having to do with a lack of money, there are no active space-based solar power missions on NASA's books much to the dismay of hundreds if not thousands of NASA engineers and scientists passed into the present who see space-based solar power as the prototype of their dreams. One of these scientists is John Makins, an ex-NASA physicist known for his work on space-based solar power and a man of notable patience. Not only he spent 25 years at NASA and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory pushing for space solar with nothing to show for it. Mankins and others have changed their thinking and are sure that space-based solar power costs are no longer absurd. So besides China, the space agencies of Japan, the European Union, and India are working on getting their own space-based solar power programs off the ground as well. Japan's JAXA, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, deserves an extra mention. Mencken said JAXA is now working on a new and developed roadmap for its program. This is also working on everything, including space elevators, space junk removal, looking for water on asteroids, and constructing motorhome-sized moon rovers. And at the end of May, the United States and Japan governments, both major partners on the International Space Station, agreed to further collaboration in space that could include flying Japanese astronauts to the moon. But it's China's interest in space-based solar power and the United States' apparent disinterest that holds the most geopolitical implications. Energy plays a crucial role in global geopolitics and international order. 
It has sustained the rise of great powers, propagated the genesis of alliances, and too often triggered the emergence of conflict and wars. Bottom line, worst case scenario, the country that first harnesses the sun's power from space wins, hands down. While earthbound renewable energy is essentially a private sector thing, space-based solar power, at least in this situation, would be a single source state-based game changer that could easily be exploited for geopolitical gain. China's steady race for militarizing commercial space technologies only makes things more complex or ominous depending on your perspective. Sure, being the first mover doesn't give China a specific or insurmountable advantage. As long as we know, their space-based solar power technology goes from the NASA open source playbook. But that suggests that the United States has to act quickly, not only to counter inevitable technology evolution, but also to keep pace with the energy market evolution brought on by the climate crisis. To be sure, getting today's U.S. administration to buy into and commit to space-based solar power is an uncertain proposition. As drafted, NASA has to grovel for sponsoring, even as the White House accelerates primary mission dates. Oddly though, it gets money for things it doesn't even ask for, like the extra $125 million to produce nuclear rockets. That puts the United States at a crucial moment. Will Joe Biden latch on to space-based solar power as a way to make the Green New Deal a global endeavor? Maybe. Will commercial companies, American or otherwise, along with countries already working on it, partner up in the name of big science to work together to make it happen? Maybe. Or will China's space-based solar power play result in an extraordinary hegemonic shift in global dominance? It's looking that way, and that keeps us up at night.